Hello, Whippy Ben here with another project. This is our John Deere JE75 walk behind self propelled mower. It's nearly 20 years old, but it's been a real workhorse. Recently, the transmission has been slipping and is failing to go into gear on a reliable basis. And so today we're going to take a look at how to remove the transmission and uh, troubleshoot it. We're going to start by turning the fuel switch to the off position. Now we'll remove the door covering the drive belt. Just undo this knob here. Push down on the top and lift up. To get a better look at what's going on around the drive mechanism, we're going to take this uh, pulley off. Uh, in order to do that, we're going to need to secure the belt here. Use a vice grip to hang onto that. And this is a seven. Uh, this is a 17 millimeter socket with the impact tool. Put that on the nut there. And that'll come off with the impact tool. Now we can just pull the pulley straight up. Next we need to release the gear selecting cable, which is held in place by the belt guide bracket on top of the transmission. Loosen the two bolts so that the end of the cable is freed from under the bracket. You will be able to wiggle the end of the cable out of the shifter arm once the transmission is freed from the chassis of the mower. To remove the transmission, we're going to have to get the wheels off. Um, use a putty knife to pry off this uh, John Deere cap. There's little tabs under each end that are holding it in place. Like that. Then underneath we have a 13 millimeter fastener here. Now careful when you lift this up because there are several other things under here. There's a regular washer and there's two large fender washers that go on here. So remember that order. This is uh, this little plate just lifts off, and the bolts that hold the transmission in are are blocked by this um, leveling um, control. So go ahead and pull it back, and then you can access both of these bolts here. There is a 10 millimeter nylon bolt underneath. Once you remove both of these bolts, then the transmission will come free. There's also a skirt here, and that's held in place by a little cotter pin and a washer. You pull the cotter pin out, the washer out, then this rod drops out and uh, the skirt comes off. You will also need to disconnect the transmission clutch cable spring from the control arm in front of the transmission under the mower deck here. Here's the transmission off the mower. Okay, to open up this transmission, we have to remove these two bolts to take this bracket off. Um, and then we've got these 10 millimeter bolts around the perimeter that all need to come out. And then on the underside here, we have two eight millimeter bolts holding this little bracket on. Once you get all those pieces off, 
Then you use a putty knife to pry apart the upper and lower halves of the transmission, which are um, uh, kind of glued together with a little bit of uh, uh, gasket maker material. This is the inside of the gearbox with the cover removed. <clears throat> this is the primary drive um, gear here. There's a pinion uh, from the main drive down here. For clarity here, I'm going to go ahead and remove this primary cluster of gears. <clears throat> so the belt turns this uh, pinion down here, which then drives this cluster of gears. These gears are all fixed on the same on a shaft here. The speeds are selected with this ring here and this selector here. As this moves in and out, it selects a different one of these rings here. So out this direction here, it's picking this ring here. Um, and as it slides its way down, eventually locks this one in here. See that? I'm going to put this in the middle selector position here, which should select the middle. Yeah, let's get this one here. Now, what uh, drives the actual drive shaft on the end here, though, is there is a selector on the end here that... Uh, <clears throat> There are actually some um, ball bearings in here. There's a ball bearing on the top. See it? And <clears throat> as this collar gets pushed inwards here by this selector here, it forces those ball bearings into pits that are in the drive shaft which then connects the drive shaft here and allows the drive shaft to rotate. For simplicity I'm going to select this gear here first because that way we can see the drive shaft moving and I have to hold this up here because uh, otherwise it will jam. So when this collar is shifted outwards you get free rotation out of the gear cluster without rotation of the drive axle here but then when we move the selector in now we can see the drive axle is moving together with the gear cluster so um, where I was having a problem with this particular drive was <clears throat> there was a lot of dirt that had developed and got into this groove here which prevented the collar from moving in close to the gear set and that prevented it from going into gear so I cleaned that all off uh, removing the grease and dirt using some gasoline and then um, I'm gonna re-grease everything with some clean grease and reassemble it and hopefully we'll be back in business okay I've got everything reassembled and all greased up here um, I'm going to reattach the selectors to help hold everything in position here I put this uh, gear selector in the middle position That will hopefully hold that in in place there. And the transmission selector. Okay. And this has been greased up thoroughly here.
Now when we reassemble this, there is a uh, detente device here that lets you tells you what gear that you're in. That needs to be lined up properly when we reassemble this. So I'm going to put this on here and hopefully it will fall into position. I'll put extra blob of grease on everything here before I shut everything down or close it all up. Oh, and we need to put some gasket maker around before we close this up. I'm just going to use some uh, Permatex uh, Ultra Blue gasket maker to make sure I try to keep the dirt and other contaminants out. Okay, let's reassemble this. And um, one thing you want to check is to make sure that this slot is lined up with this, that slot position, orientation is lined up with the lever orientation there. And then this little hole here is going to have to line up with this thing here. a little wiggle here. There we go, that finally seated properly. It looks like everything else is seated. Now we're gonna replace the uh, case screws here. Actually, I'm going to have to remove this to access these screws on the end here. And these are 10 millimeter nuts here, or bolts, 10 millimeter bolts. reattach this. And we'll want to double check to make sure everything's working. So here we can feel the clicker on our shifter. So that was aligned properly. And here we have our uh, neutral and engaged positions here. Let's spin this drive shaft here just to confirm that things are working as they should. So you can see that. Um, actually, I'll flip this over and then you can see that. We are in gear here, and as we turn, so does this. 
if we shift into higher gear, it spins faster. And shift down to our lowest gear, it's spinning more, it's driving more slowly. So all of our gears are working. Five speeds. And we pull this thing forward here. That should be our neutral position. And it's idling without turning the uh, drive shaft here like it should. And then back in the gear. Push this down. has to be moving a little bit for it to that ball bearing to there it goes and we're back in gear so we'll just clean this up a little bit and we'll have to reverse our removal procedures to put this all back in the mower Okay, let's remount this bracket here. It goes like that. Oh, we're going to have to mount, uh, put our um, gear selector cable back in through here and hook this back up so we won't tighten this up completely just yet we'll just use these to hold this in place this spring hooks through little hole in this bracket here so that keeps it in neutral position until the drive mechanism pushes back on here and puts it into drive <clears throat> that's part of this lever here um, pushes up on there speaking of which let's remount this That uses an eight millimeter socket. So now as we flip this back over, when you go into gear, the spring pulls up on this which pushes back on this, which then forces this back and engages the, engages the uh, gears. <clears throat> so reinstalling the transmission is just the reverse of the disassembly procedure. You need to make sure that um, we rehook up our shifter which is here. We'll need to get that under here first. So I'm gonna take this bracket off for now. cable under there. Re-engage the uh, shift selector here. Requires a little bit of gymnastics. Get 
our cable. Back in its cable holder position here. from the underside. Okay, now we just have to line up the holes and the frame with our mounting plates here. So we'll hold the nylock nuts with a uh, 10 millimeter wrench and insert the bolts from above. Just a little bit here until we get this one in. Same procedure. Two large fender washers. Small washer. Line the wheel. All right. Now we'll have to put these wheel height adjusters back in a normal range. And we're going to flip this back on its back. While we're here, here's the uh, cable for engaging the drive. So I'm going to go ahead and hook that into here. the cable on the other side to uh, adjust the tension on that but uh, now we're going to reattach the wheel here uh, this is a 13 millimeter fastener there Oh, and don't forget to snap on your John Deere hubcaps. There we go. And I did remove the protective skirt here. I'm going to have to reattach this. It's a cotter pin, a washer. Spread that back through there. Back to the bottom hole here. Washer. And 
cotter pin. It's not going to be easy to film this, but we need to get the control cable back under this bracket here. I'm sure my head will be in the way, but just need to get it underneath the bracket there. And then we can tighten the bracket and this will hold that control cable in place. So we're back to the 10 millimeter fastener here. And I'm gonna reach underneath so I can adjust the tilt to align that so I can tighten it. And final check on the alignment of the control cable here. Okay, so we've got our control cable in position. I'm gonna test with the shifter here, make sure that it works. And it looks like it goes to the full range of motion. Five, four, three, two, one. And here's the cable that, uh, the control cable for the drive mechanism here. We're going to reattach this. Fair bit of slack there, but we're going to have to attach our drive next, and then we'll adjust the tension, fine, the final tension. Okay, we have to align the key, the keyway with the key on the drive shaft down here, and we're going to incorporate the new belt here. There it goes. All right, and the belt is inside the keepers. I'll put that nut back on here. And we're gonna use the vice grips to grab the belt here while we tighten up this nut. And that requires a 17 millimeter socket. Okay. It's now back on there tight. Now we can adjust the drive belt tension here. Looks like we need to pick up just a little bit of slack there. Now all that remains is we just need to put the cover back on. So here's our cover. We'll keep your knob here. And the test drive.
that's how you can troubleshoot the transmission on one of these uh, JE75s or JX75 mowers by John Deere. I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, if you did, please subscribe. Until the next project, bye-bye.